Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And let's open with an email we got from Charlie Red, who says, to quote Inigo Montoya, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Now, in The Princess Bride, that word is inconceivable, but Charlie is talking about the word approachable, which he thinks we overuse. Um, and he says that something has gone from the channel because a lot of the solves that we are suggesting are manageable are multi-layer set theory that nobody can lay a finger on. Um, I Look, we have to acknowledge that the level of puzzles that's being set and sent to us is pretty hard sometimes. That There's no doubt about that, people. I think when they either create their hardest puzzles or find them, they like to see what we will make of those. That's understandable. Um, we do end up presenting some of those. To some extent, the way that puzzles have been set lately has changed and grids with no givens and intricate break-ins, they've become much more commonplace than they used to be um, years ago. And there may have been some diminution in the ability of people to get into the puzzles that we're solving. So we have to acknowledge that that's true. And we might even have become better solvers thanks to the practice. There's no doubt about that either. So it's a very valid call up to be fair. And we, we need to focus on occasionally well, more often showing puzzles that are genuinely approachable and maybe sometimes not using the word when it's inappropriate. So all of that taken to heart. Now, Charlie has sent us this puzzle, um, which he said, with that in mind, here's, here's this puzzle uh, called Skidoo 23. So we'll look at that in a moment. Um, frankly, the grid looks as utterly baffling as anything we get. So going to be interesting, I think. Um, I will mention that if you do want approachable puzzles, um, the apps are full of them. Plenty in there. Do have a look at those. The Thermo app updated lately. The links are all in the description field under the video, as is the link to this puzzle. So what have we got going on here? How can this possibly be a grid? Well, although it's irregular regions, apart from that, miracle rules apply fully. So each row, column, and marked region contains the digits one to nine. It's not normal Sudoku rules because we don't have three by three boxes. Um, obviously, there's one cage marked, which gives it some. And no identical digit can appear within a king's move or a knight's move of another of the, that digit. So this is actually pretty powerful. Look at this cell. The digits within a king's move are in those. The digits within a knight's move of that are there. So none of those can be the same digit as that. And if you mark all of those cells, and I'll be doing a bit of coloring, and then the cells it sees by normal Sudoku, you can actually see that for that cell, it only has one position in this cage. So that was just a random cell I picked that happened to be quite powerful. But this sort of restriction, I feel, is going to help us solve the puzzle. Whether we can term it approachable, well, I wait to see. I'm surprised. Sorry, there's one more vital rule as well that uh, non-consecutive, sorry, there is the non-consecutive rule. Consecutive digits, i.e. 5 and 6, sorry, e.g. 5 and 6, cannot be next to each other. So... No two cells next to each other can contain digits that are consecutive. So 1 and 2 couldn't be there, nor 9 and 8, etc. 1 and 9 could be. They're not consecutive. Right. So there we go. Those are the rules of Charlie Red's Skidoo 23. Um, do give it a go if you feel like it. I'm going to try it now. Let's get cracking. Well, I can see where to start, and I can put in a digit, so that's good. Uh, we've got a 6 there because the 23 cage has to contain 6, 8, and 9. And by this non-consecutive rule, 8 and 9 can't be next to each other, so the 6 has to separate them. So we get one digit from this cage. 
That's what we get. Thanks, Charlie. Right, where can that six go in this cage? Now, this is promising looking. All of those cells are a king's move away. Those it sees by Sudoku. That and that are a knight's move away. Yes, we can put in another digit straight away. Now I'm going to look at this cage. Those by ordinary Sudoku and that. Uh, that by the king's move. Yes, another six. And that is quite an interesting start, I will have to admit. Uh, not so good in that cage. I'm going to just briefly colour the cells where six can go. Oh no, this is looking better. So those by kings and knights and ordinary Sudoku and that from that, or oh, from both digits, oh, left with two places where six can go. Just looking at this cage, those are all ordinary Sudoku impossibilities. And I'm just again looking basically at ordinary Sudoku. Now, I'm left with this cage. Can I do something here that's going to unwind? I don't know. I haven't done that cage either, but I haven't got much traction there. Right, those two, there are a number of cells that they see, that they both see. All of those are ruled out. I think all of these are. Each one of those four cells can be seen by both of those using these rules, either by kings, knights, or ordinary Sudoku. Yeah, I'm confident about that. So one of those two is the six, and that is not resolving itself. Oh, hang on a second. Right, row seven. Okay, the question is not where in a bot, where in a region does six go, it's where in row seven does it go. It goes in one of those, so that is no longer possible because that is in the same cage as wherever the six is in one of those cells. Now, in this box, which I haven't looked at yet, those two have been ruled out by those two cells. And that means in this row, there's only one place left. Yeah, the, the key thing is that's not possible because it's seeing both of those. So that must be a six, right. So let's take out the pencil marks, put in the six. That's the only place I believe six can go in row five. Oh, and that doesn't. Right, in this row, row four. Um, yeah, all of those are impossible. Right, it's in one of those two sixes. And that means we've got the two sixes for column eight and column nine. That's not a six. We've got the three sixes to put in rows one, two, and three. Now, that cell is seen by both of those. So that's been ruled out. And the only one left in row three is here. Bingo. So that's a six. Let's get rid of the colors there. And after that, I think I finally do dry up on sixes. Now, I mean, is this approachable? I don't know. Maybe. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is get rid of the colors and put in pencil mark sixes because I might need more coloring in this puzzle. So what can we do next? Well, we could look at these sixes and think about fives and sevens, which can't be orthogonal to them, but I don't think that looks very profitable. I'm going to look at these eight and nines. And I don't know which is which, but let's use coloring again. So we'll say green and purple. And this green, look, all of these are definitely ruled out, and that, and that. Yeah, that green goes in here in that cell, in that uh, region. Um, purple in this, I think they're all ruled out in purple in this region. So purple ends up in one of those two. 
let me just see if look, I'm going to sort of part shade those purple is in one of those two. Let's see. I'm just using the gray as a way to ah green down here. They're all impossible. So green's in one of those two. Okay, let's. Uh, that's not working now for some reason. I oh, know it is. That right? They're part shaded green. Now in this row, oh, green's in one of those two. Wow, it's getting. And in this row, there is possible. That's not, that's not. I think that is possible if that was green and that was green. So in the bottom row, it's those two for green. I mean, this, okay. Charlie, I think you're using the word approachable and it doesn't quite mean what you think it means, frankly, or else you're just mocking our use of it by sending us a hard puzzle under that title. Oh, green up here is in one of these two because the two definite greens we've got are seeing a lot of things there. Do I, I must need to combine R. Ah. Oh, that's interesting. These are the only two possibilities for green in this bottom right region, and that's ruling out all of those. So um, those seem... Oh, look at... Yeah, lovely. Column six. This column. Where does green go here? Those are the two possibilities in this region. They see both of those cells by... Sudoku and Knight's move in some way. That one sees all these five and says they can't be green. So green actually is down here. And we've got that green in place and that doesn't resolve these at the bottom. Bother. So all of those, as far as I can see, could be green. That does mean this can't and this can't. So actually, in this shape, I think green has been restricted to these three cells. Yeah, those two are ruled out by those possible positions. And these are all ruled out by positions in this region. Right, and those three all rule out that cell and that cell actually. So they don't have it. This is a definite green, so that is not. Where does green go in this shape? This really does work. I mean, this is fascinating. Green goes there. That's ruling out, oh my good grief, that's ruling out all of those cells. Green goes up there. That's going to fix our sixes in the top. That becomes green. I mean, you've got to love how these restrictions work together. They work like this in the classic Miracle Sudoku, and it's almost better in this extra region stuff. It is hilarious. And look, green's there. I think that's all the greens. Bam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Unbelievable. So they're all eight or nine. Right, purple. No, let's do that six thing that I saw. That's not a six. Sorry, that is a six because that one's not. So now that one's not and that one is. That doesn't resolve this X wing of sixes over here, but never mind. What we have got resolved is this cell, which can't be next to eight or nine as purple is eight or nine. And we have the non-consecutive rule, which we've barely used yet, but wow, it comes into force now. And we can make that purple. Now, what else can we do with the purples? Purple, purple, purple. Suddenly the word sounds ridiculous. Um, I 
Wow. Okay, those three cells are available in that box. Oh no, in this shape. They're all gone. They're gone. Yes, purple's there. Done. Not there or there. Not there from that one. Not there. Yep, purple done in that shape as well. Of course, it has to not be next to the 8-9. That's really useful. So they're all impossible. That one, oh, uh, there or there in the top left box. Now that's ruling out all of those. We've got to get two purples into the bottom row, the bottom two rows. And this shape's been done. That shape gets one. One of these two is purple. Up here, they can't be. Ah, this must be the only one. That's ruled out, they're ruled out, that's ruled out, they're ruled out. Yes, that's purple. So, in this top right shape, got to be here, there's nowhere else. Right, so that's getting rid of that and that as possibilities. This becomes fully purple. That can't be as a result. Purple there, purple there, that is dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are all the purples. How extraordinary. And they don't touch the greens, so that's all worked fine. But we don't know which they are. And I... Oh, I, sp I suppose we're going to get sevens to... Wow. Okay, sevens next. Because that's the only way we can approach a Miracle Sudoku is doing it that way. Now, we haven't got any sevens in the grid, so this is going to be tricky, but they can't be next to sixes. Okay, what I'm going to do is mark all the cells that are next to sixes, and these are the ones that cannot be sevens. I think that's the way to approach this. Now, it's harder with those two, so we, we're going to be starting with the other shapes. So blue cannot be seven. Also, seven cannot be touching both a green and a purple, because then it would be next to eight. So that's giving us a few more cells. Quite a lot more cells, actually. That. Oh, and on the diagonal there, and on the diagonal there, seven can't be in any of those. So bam, we do know it's in this cell, in this shape. <coughs> that's brilliant. There's only one place seven can be. I mean, that really is clever. So then it goes here because that's a knight's move away. Um, that seven on its own sees both those cells. So seven in there. This one's the only place left in that shape. That sees all of these cells. So we can put a seven in there. Uh, that's the only place in the top right shape. This must be possible. Oh my goodness, this is brilliant. This really is an extraordinary event to see this puzzle. I mean, literally, I think the word inconceivable does apply, and I think I know what it means. And there we go. All seven's done. Let's remove the colouring blue. And does... Oh, I thought one of these was going to sort out the eights and nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They are all marked. Surely the we can't disambiguate eight and nine unless the sevens deal. Oh, they do there. Right. Sorry. One seven beside one green or purple cell. So that one must be the nine. Purples must be eight. And we are flying along. Let's get rid of the coloring um, because we don't need it for those anymore. And all nine, eight, sevens and sixes apart from these two placed. And now we can do those because seven can't be next to six. So there we go, all nine, eight, seven, and six placed. And now we move on to fives. I know the rules this time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thorough here. I can't help it. I think it's quite entertaining. So let's mark in a different color just for fun all the numbers, all the cells that are right next to six that cannot therefore be five. 
and let's work out where can five go is there one yes look at column eight checkerboard pattern all the way down the only place that can't that can be five is down there at the bottom um, that sees this cell so we can put a five in row eight there that sees those two oh no oh, don't dry up here no look at this cage this region sorry that has been ruled out and that's the only other place that sees those two so we can put the five in there still don't know at the top it's in one of those two cells in the top right now this cage has had that and that ruled out so we can put in the five there Ro column three there's only that space left once that's gone that takes that out and <laughs> five goes in there and five goes in there. Let's just highlight the fives. We've got them all done except the top right corner. There we go. And we can get rid of the coloring that got us the fives <coughs> and put in some coloring to give us the fours. Now, fewer and fewer cells are getting colored. Ooh, I'll say that as I just hit a bunch there. I think that's all the ones we can color to avoid fours. So top left, yeah, this gets easier as we go to each number. Bottom left, that means that cell, and that means that one, and that means that one, and there. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that there is a grid that this works. As I said, very nearly inconceivable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That does get rid of all those. Oh, I mean, it's it's heavenly when this works. Right, three. Can't be next to four there, so in that shape. There it is. That gives us the three there. That gives us the three in row three. We can almost work down row by row. That, not because that can't be, but because that can't be. That's ruling it into that cell. Knights moves for row six, put it there. Oh, this is so epic. Honestly, this is brilliant. Let's just check that's all nine threes, each row and column. Perfection. Let's do twos. We've basically got two and one in every cell. And look, here is next to a three. So that's a one. So we can just do two and one in every uh, region is what I mean. When I said cell one, it just flash around the grid. Oh, look at this. I love it. I mean, Charlie, that that is a really beautiful puzzle. I do not think you could call that approachable because the beginning of it is absolutely cruel. You look at that single cage and you think, how can we do anything? But once you get a start, that's when it's fun. That's a brilliant puzzle. I hope you had a go at that. That really is neat. I love things like that. I mean, it brings back the original Miracle Sudoku totally, just like that, fresh in the mind. Excellent puzzle. Thank you so much, Charlie, for sending that to us. And uh, well done if you did get started on that. I'm sure you enjoyed it as it carried on. That's lovely. The universe sing to us again. Thanks ever ever so much for watching Cracking the Cryptic as always and hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye now.